Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be ranking all of my ColourPop palettes. Please ignore the mess back here. I am still packing. <laughs> we are actually, so this is the day before Thanksgiving, and we're actually about to leave for a very long road trip in like two hours, but I needed to get some filming done, so here we are. I currently only have nine ColourPop palettes, only nine, but I, I have owned more and I've decluttered them. Um, if you want to see kind of my history with the ColourPop palettes, check out my declutter playlist because you'll probably see a lot of them in there. I'll throw that up in the cards if you're interested. But what I'm going to do is basically just go through all the ones that I currently own right now, mainly their nine pan kind of monochromatic palette series, and just rank them and talk about my pros and cons for each palette. It is uh, 7 59 a.m. and the neighbors decided to be a good time to vacuum out their van so I hope you can't hear that. <laughs> but like I did in my previous ranking video where I ranked all of my favorite ABH palettes or all the ABH palettes that I owned if you missed that I'll throw it up in the cards but just like in that video I did pre-rank all of the palettes so I have them in order from least favorite to most favorite and we're going to oh that's an alarm going off so like in my previous ranking video I've already pre-ranked them and we're going to go through them from least favorite to most favorite talking about pros and cons along the way so the first palette I'm going to be talking about is the nine pan blue palette so this is the blue moon color pop palette and it looks the cleanest because it's one of the fewest fewest <laughs> it's one of the palettes that I've used the least it is honestly a gorgeous palette I think if I hadn't already purchased the blue blood palette from Jeffree Star this would have been a much better and much cheaper alternative to that but since I have that palette and it was so much more expensive I try to use that one more when I'm looking for a blue look but that was the last palette that I ever purchased or the last product I purchased from Jeffree Star if you missed the, the video where I talked about kind of uh my thoughts about my previous hypocrisy when it came to certain problematic people. I'll throw that video up in the cards. Why are you vacuuming at 8 a.m.? So I feel like even though this is actually a pretty good palette, thankfully this is one of the palettes that came out before they were putting a glitter in every one. So there is no pressed glitter in here. So this is a very nice, very useful palette. I just don't reach for it, which is an issue. I have a large palette collection and I do struggle with reaching for certain palettes at certain times, so this is probably my least touched, least thought of Colourpop palette. Next we have a palette that I also don't reach for for pretty much the same reason, and this is the main squeeze palette. So this is basically their like reds, the reddish monochromatic pan palette. Again, this is a really nice palette. They don't have the glitter in here, which is very nice. You just have shimmers, you've got mattes. The shades are all gorgeous. They apply it. It's a usual color pop formula, but um, I do own Blood Sugar again, and I do own Modern Renaissance. I own a lot of other palettes with this color story, so I really barely touch this palette, uh, but this is one I'm more prone to reach for because I do like, if I'm to choose between a blue and a red look, I will most likely do a red look. But it is a really nice palette. The shades are really nice. Uh, again, I just don't reach for it. The next palette I have here is actually, I believe it was a limited edition holiday palette from a couple of years ago. And it's one of the only uh, like holiday palettes I ever picked up from ColourPop, which I mean, at this point, do they have holiday releases? I think they just have weekly releases. I don't think it really matters. <laughs> And this is the All I See is Magic palette. So this is a bigger palette. It is also rearranged in here. The palettes that come in their cardboard kind of packaging without a mirror, they're super easy to depot. So I love rearranging them. And so this is the way that I rearranged my palette. This is just such a nice, like deep kind of, it's a definitely a neutral palette, but it is a deep, I'm trying to say, it's like a smoky-ish, perfect like holiday palette. I moved most of the shimmers down here to the bottom row. There is a white shimmer up here and like a pinky and a gold shimmer up here. So you are getting more shimmers than mattes, but I feel like the mattes they give you in this middle row that I created just are so cohesive and they're nice. And I just thought this was such a great palette. This is one of the first palettes they made in kind of this bigger format. I know now they're coming out with like Morphe sized palettes, which I don't think those are really needed, if we're being honest. But this is such a perfect size. The pans are a little bit smaller than you would see. I mean, they're the, this is the normal ColourPop palette size pan, but these aren't like Juvia's Place size or Morphe sized pans in here. So you've got a lot of product in here. You've got a nice variety of shades in here. The packaging is adorable. So you've got this beautiful like front part. All the shades are on the back, which doesn't 
help if you rearrange the shades like I do, but I appreciate the effort. And then the packaging itself has like these cute little like glitter sparkles everywhere. I just think it's cute. It's this far down on the list because again, I don't reach for this palette as often as I would probably like to. I really need to bring this back into my palette rotation because it is a really good palette. I just don't touch it. Next, we have another nine pan monochromatic palette and this is the Orange You Glad palette. This is, I just, I, with the exception, this is, I think uh, the rest of the, monochromatic pan no there's one more palette in here most of, i hate the glitter like everyone else the only place that i feel mildly comfortable using the glitter in these palettes is like as an inner corner highlight and by inner corner i mean putting it as close to my nose as i can so that it's not too close to my eye and then like all the way up here as like a brow bone highlight because as someone with hooded lids i just spit everywhere as someone with hooded lids Glitter does not stay, like chunky glitter doesn't stay on my lids. So I have a much higher chance of that glitter falling out and falling into my eye and blinding me forever. So I don't like using glitter on my lid. So I don't like that shade as much, but this is like such a pretty palette. I love oranges. I love oranges and yellows. Spoiler alert, the next palette is the yellow one. But I just thought this, sh like this color story was very unique you don't see a whole lot of specifically orange palettes really you see a lot of warm palettes with like some reds and some yellows but you really don't see a lot of focus on orange so i really like this uh again i don't reach for it as often as i should which is why it's kind of this far down on the list but I, i'm like this is something i won't declutter because it is unique in my collection and i like that they focused on orange like I spoiled in the last section, the next palette is the Uh Huh Honey palette, which is the yellow palette, which on my camera I think is coming up kind of like mustard, but this is, with the exception of, again, that pressed glitter in the middle, this is a nice palette. I just wish that they had put more yellows in, because if you see like this shade, this shade, and this shade, they're not so much yellow as they are brown like brown yellow brown brello i don't know but the, it, this isn't as like bam yellow as i wanted uh that being said i have heard a really good like alternative to this is from midas cosmetics they had a yellow palette come out and i think it's called the lemonade palette i just picked it up so they had this huge black friday sale which was incredible i was waiting for that so i picked up um that yellow palette a couple of their small coffee palettes and then the flower bomb palette and it was like literally a, a fourth of the price because of that sale so I'm definitely gonna test that out because I love yellow shadow I know a lot of people shy away from yellow shadow and even when I wear a nice yellow look I get comments from my friends and family and they're like eh, that doesn't look good <laughs> I've, my grandma told me straight to my face I did a yellow look that I loved and she says you look sick what are you doing <laughs> But I love yellow eyeshadow and I thought this would be a really good thing. Um, it's here because I do reach for it more than the other Colourpop palettes in this list. But I, I just kind of wish there was more like brighter yellows in here. Alright, so we only have four more palettes left. So we're getting into palettes that I really like and I reach for more so than a lot of other palettes in my collection. And uh, can I count? So this is in fourth place. <laughs> so this is palette number one, two, three, four, five, six, which means it's fourth from my favorite. And this is the Baby Got Peach palette. So I actually did a whole video comparing this to the Kylie Peach palette. And while I may have liked the Kylie Peach palette a little bit better, I still think this is overall a really good palette from ColourPop. This is a very good pink toned peach. So if you're looking for more peachy pinky colors, this is your girl. If you're looking for orange toned peaches, which is what I was originally looking for, the Kylie one's a bit better for you. So even though I prefer the orangey peachy tones and the Kylie, this is still a really good palette. Again, you've got that annoying pressed glitter, but it isn't a peachy. It's like a regular kind of a silver glitter. So I feel like this is a bit more useful and a bit more, um, applicable to more looks than some of the other pressed glitters in these palettes so i love using that as the inner corner highlight here because it's just it matches just about any look you can put it into if you want to see more of my thoughts and more looks with this palette check out that peach comparison video because i did show you like full swatches a look application all that jazz with this palette 
Next, we have a palette that when I saw finally get released, I was so excited for and I like dropped everything to purchase it like immediately. This is the Just My Luck palette or the green palette. I love green eyeshadows. While this isn't I, I can't even say that. It is a very green palette. There's only two shades in here, which are um, I Love You and Charmed that are more brown toned than green toned. This is a really good green palette. I did do a whole video on this palette, so it was more of a first impression kind of video. But since then, I have played with this palette. I really like this palette and I love it doesn't have a glitter in it. This is before they were putting glitters in every palette. <laughs> So this is a really great palette. I love the packaging. I just I love the fact that they finally did like a focused green palette. I know we're getting more green palettes now in the beauty community than we were used to because I know a lot of people like really hate green. I love green eyeshadow. So I'm really glad that this came out. Um, I really love it. The only critique I would have is I wish we had one more light green glitter like instead of this like olive deep glitter glitter shimmer. I would rather see a lighter pale kind of green shade I can use as an inner corner highlight or all over the lid. Other than that, I love this palette. So now we're down to the last two palettes. So my second favorite color pop palette of all time. I think this was limited edition. Honestly, I can't keep track of everything anymore. But this came out a little while ago and this is the Good Sport palette. This palette, uh, I just thought this was like the perfect fall palette. Just oh, the, the mattes, the shimmers, you got uh, like warm tones, you've got greens, you've got a yellow, a really nice yellow down here, you've got purples. This just screams fall, does it not? It's gorgeous and one of my favorite, two of my favorite shimmers of all time are in this palette and that is the shade Rookie and the shade Ebb, E-B-B. Down here so this green shimmer and this nice duo chromey kind of shimmer up here they're gorgeous ah oh, this is such a good palette it's really affordable and honestly below subculture this is the palette that most gives me fall vibes so I actually do reach for this palette I don't talk about it as much as my channel as I should because I keep I didn't know if it was still available so I'll double check on the ColourPop website to see if you can still purchase this because if this was limited edition I will cry this is such a good palette and it should be in their permanent collection dun dun dun, dun. we are here we are ready to party I don't know we are at my favorite ColourPop palette and you know what this is an oldie but a goodie the very first palette ColourPop ever released and it's still I believe their best to date. This is the Yes Please palette. Mine is still dirty because of course it's white packaging with some deep really pigmented shades so it's not going to look the best. This is such a good palette. They I believe this was um, put out to dupe the Natasha Denona Sunset palette and I did talk about this in a previous video of mine but this does rival it. It's only $16. It Oh, the shades are amazing. It doesn't like shade for shade dupe the palette, but it gives you the exact same like feel, look, vibe, if you will, of the Sunset palette. And I would recommend you pick this up on, like rather than the Natasha Denona one because the Natasha Denona is expensive and it's like honestly now not mind blowing. It was when it first came out. That Natasha Denona palette broke the like the beauty community because everyone was like falling over themselves about it and it was a nice color story and I believe that kicked off the warm shadow trend including all the dupes that came after it the most famous I believe this color pop one and this is such a good palette guys it's affordable you get everything that you could ever really need for a nice warm kind of look it's not super neutral because you've got a bright orange a bright red a bright yellow you're getting colors in here so this isn't really a neutral palette i rearranged mine of course again this is the cardboard packaging so you can rearrange the shades very easily and i just i love having all the mattes up here and the shimmers down here and i just think there really isn't anything that i would change about this palette it's honestly like one of like, it's like I don't have any critiques. This is like a really good palette. Okay. The critique I have isn't about the actual shades or the quality. It's about the packaging. Maybe having the stark white packaging it wasn't the best idea, but I'll deal with it because this is an amazing palette. <laughs> and I still think, you know, ColourPop's first palette, they hit the bullseye. They're going batshit crazy now with all of their releases. But I think, honestly, they, they hit a hole in one with their first palette. So there you have it. Those are all of my ColourPop palettes ranked 
favorite to least favorite, least favorite to favorite. Let me know down below how many ColourPop palettes you own and which one is your favorite. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye. Oh, also, in case you're wondering, I am wearing a coral lip today. It looks a bit red on camera, but this is the Fenty Lip Stunner in Unattached, so it's like the orangey kind of coral shade.